murder attempt survivors, what happened? Not my story, but my cousin's. She was married to this crazy man. I won't go into detail about the ways he was awful, but he was insane. Also, before he married my cousin, he had another family who all died in a house fire. All four of his children and his previous wife. We all felt bad for him for suffering such a tragic loss, because we didn't know what he was like behind the scenes at home. We never suspected anything off about that, just thought it was a tragedy. Well, finally my cousin decided to leave him. She took her two kids and moved away. She had to leave abruptly, so she was missing a lot of important things. Social security cards, birth certificates, stuff like that. One day, after things cooled down some between her and her ex, she arranged for her to go over to their old house and gather the rest of their things. He asked that she bring the kids, because he missed them. Luckily, she decided to let them stay at their friend's house instead. She went over to the house, and he was absolutely enraged that she didn't bring the kids. He shot my cousin four times and then shot himself in the head. He was planning to do a murder-suicide with the whole family, that's why he wanted the kids there. My cousin was shot twice in the neck, in the face, and in the arm. Somehow, none of the bullets struck any major arteries or anything. She was able to make it next door to her neighbor's house and get help. She survived a murder-suicide attempt, and her ex didn't. That whole thing really makes me look at that house fire tragedy in a different light. Last year my neighbor plotted to kidnap and murder my wife and I. I was working from home one morning and heard a knock at the door at 8 am. I ignored it at first hoping whoever it was would go away. After a minute of knocking I opened the door. It was my neighbor who I had spoken with a few times. My wife was at work and I could tell he was surprised when I opened the door and not my wife. He was expecting her to be home and not me. He noticed that I recently purchased a new car and asked if I could show it to him. He tried to walk inside but I asked him to walk around to the garage because of COVID-19. I showed him the car and he was acting strange. Always kept one hand in his pocket. My garage is very small so we were in close proximity to each other. He kept inching closer to me which made me uncomfortable. He brought a open coke bottle, filled with a tan liquid, and said I brought you a coke. I declined the offer. After a few minutes he asked if he could see my gauge cluster. We walked around to the driver's side and I sat in the driver's seat to turn on the car and show him the gauge cluster. With door open, there was very little room besides the side of the car and the garage wall. After turning on the car he pulled a large hunting knife to my neck. I immediately grabbed his wrist and slammed him back into the wall. At this point we are wrestling between the car and wall as I try to get the knife away from him. During this 30 second period, it seems like an absolute miracle that I was not stabbed. The blade grazed past my stomach multiple times. I was eventually able to grab the knife and force him out into the driveway. Immediately after grabbing the knife he started saying what are you doing? I was just trying to show you my knife, and acting like I had just assaulted him. I was in such a state of shock that I actually started to believe him and wondered if I had overreacted. I know this seems ridiculous but I was completely delusional at the time and did not know what his intentions were. I stood in the driveway, hand shaking, with 911 dialed on my phone but did not make the call. He acted like nothing just happened and start asking my questions. Really suspicious questions. Do you have a security system? I lied and said yes. I asked him to go home multiple times and eventually went back inside the house but did not shut the main garage door. At this point I needed to drive him to work and started getting ready. Showering, getting dressed, it. I assumed he had just walked back home. After getting ready I went outside and walked around the house to the garage with a can of bear mace. I searched around the garage and was worried he was still there. As I started to get into my car and leave. I saw my neighbor laying down behind some boxes in the garage. Staring at me. I yelled and ran as fast I could back to the front door and called the cops. Cops arrived quickly and my neighbor had disappeared. They searched around his house and mine but could not find him. They said they would stay in the area but were going to leave for now. 
My house is surrounded by woods and I have a large back porch. Frightened, I stood in the middle of the porch while holding their maze. I looked around and noticed my neighbor hiding in the woods staring at me. I ran back inside and called the cops. Cops arrived quickly and pulled guns on my neighbor and arrested him. He later said I was just trying to scare him. They found the knife, zip ties, vodka, and a note on him that read turn around and put your hands behind your back. It was later discovered that the coke bottle he wanted me to drink contained pesticides. He was there to murder me or my wife. He was charged with three felony counts and is currently awaiting trial. Not me but my sister. She was working in retail sales at a large popular mall in a large city a few years ago. One day as she arrived at the mall for work, she stopped to use the restroom. The ones general mall goers would use. After using the restroom, she went to wash her hands when she noticed in the mirror that a man standing was standing behind her. She made eye contact with him and apparently gave him a nod of acknowledgement. The man was apparently holding a garbage bag he had gotten out of the roost room trash can and had fashioned it like a rope. He proceeded to approach my sister and wrap it around her neck, choking her and then slamming her on the ground. She doesn't remember much, but the security camera showed the man literally choke her unconscious and then jumped, stomped on her head repeatedly. The man fled and she was found by another mall goer. She was covered in blood and her face badly disfigured. She broke her jaw and lost several teeth. Long-term brain damage is still not known. He tried to kill her. He was a complete stranger but the police think it was a gang initiation type of thing. The guy is now in jail for a very long time, and my sister has very severe PTSD from it. There was a girl in the village of my parents' vacation home who was known to have mental health issues. My family never judged her for it, both my parents are teachers and used to deal with slow students that say some wicked things every now and then. When I was two, my parents went on vacation and so did that girl's family, that girl was 12. Both families were having lunch together and my parents left the girl to play with me. When my sister, 9 at the time, went to look for me I was being drowned in a water tank by said girl who was just looking at my sister smiling and saying some weird things. My sister screamed and my parents and the girl's family went to the rescue in time to save me. I have no memory of this, so all I know is the story my family told me a few times. I haven't actually met this girl yet, neither have I ever talked to her family. Both families still go on vacation to the same village at the same time, but my parents cut ties with them. A while back I was at my friend's house when a guy came in through balcony glass door. He had climbed up to two-story balcony, and proceeded to start yelling at her things like who is the motherfucker now bitch and I stood up to protect her. It was dark and I couldn't see the knife in his hands which he then stabbed me in the face with. Never met the guy or even knew his name. After I got out of hospital and started to try and figure out what it was that all about our mutual friends told me that he had asked the perp the same question and his answer was I was going to murder her but didn't know said it was there also. I'm 23 and that was my second time getting stabbed and altogether I have 5 stabbing scars. WTF equals welcome to Finland. Not sure if this counts but, had this neighbor kid I used to play with, a complete psycho. I was 4 or 5, he was a year or two older than me. One day he convinced me to walk well beyond the distance that my parents allowed me without an adult, wanted to show me something he said. We arrived at a small lake. He pointed at the water and said look there's tadpoles in there. Let's catch some. We don't have a net, you'll have to jump in and catch them with your hands. I told him I couldn't swim, he insisted. He told me he'd pull me up if I was drowning. I refused, he kept trying to convince me but eventually gave up, said I was a coward. A friend of my mom saw us on our way back, and my mom wasn't very happy about the situation when she found out. Eleven years later. I transferred schools and ended up in the same class as him. I figured my childhood memory of him was exaggerated. We talked about childhood memories. He told me how one of our neighbors, who was a cop, 
had screamed at him for no reason because he was playing with a cat. Remember this. I told him it was nice to see him have so many friends, he responded friends? They're not my friends, fucking kids. I only let them think I'm their friend. Smiling the whole time, figured he was joking. I later told my mom about having met him, she went quiet. I told her that he seemed to have turned out alright. Nothing more said. Couple of weeks later, I brought it up again. She said as a mother I'll never be able to trust a boy, and you shouldn't either. She went on to tell me how I was unable to sleep and cried a lot at night when I was a young kid. Reason being that he had it told me he was planning to burn down our house and murder me and my family in our sleep. And about our neighbor screaming at him, turns out he was actually caught torturing the poor cat. After that I avoided him. Thinking back, his behavior was off even as a young adult. He was clearly manipulative and lacked empathy. Final thoughts, pretty sure he wanted to drown me that day and wanted it to seem like an accident.